Hello and thanks for joining me. As you can see, quite a few others have as well. Uh, it's very shortly after dawn and it's already getting pretty busy, as you'd expect. But my God, what a place. Well, I'm going to be honest with you and say that I really don't think this is going to be one of my best vlogs. Unfortunately, it's just been really, really difficult. And by that I mean difficult to tear myself away from capturing some absolutely stunning images. Now you know how on photography vlogs people say to you, oh, I hope you can hear me okay over all this noise. Well, let me tell you something. You haven't heard anything until you've listened to this lot. Simon managed to get us here for uh, first light um, and we've been down for about an hour which meant that when we got here we were the only folks here and we were able to pick our spot. Um, the, we were in a position on the Canadian side where we're facing east and that meant the sun came up right through the spray plume that lifts up out of the, the bowl of the horseshoe. It's almost like watching a volcano go off. This, this column of spray just goes up constantly. Um, the falls themselves, well, obviously if you've been here, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then I'd strongly recommend you get here. Of course, the composition makes itself. There's next to no options for the landscape photographer because you can only park yourself on the balcony. Um, but what I have been able to do is find a spot that brings the curve of the horseshoe out from the bottom left corner of the frame. So at least I've got that nice arc to lead your eye round through. From an exposure standpoint, actually a little bit more complicated than you might think. What I've had to do is use a 0.9 soft grad because I was really conscious that the sun's coming up immediately uh, behind the plume. It's going to blow out the highlights, but of course there's lots of highlights in the water itself um, and the sun is now just catching the lip of the horseshoe. So. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking to you, I've got stuff to be getting on with. Anyway, um, I'm shooting it uh, f5.6, but I've been trying to get my shutter speed uh, around a quarter to a half a second because anything slower than that is really blurring it out too much. This water is dropping so fast that to keep any detail in it, you still do need quite a fast shutter speed. We've been so lucky with the light this morning that the one time that I've come here in my entire life I've just been told by somebody who's been here countless times that this is absolutely exceptional. What's happened is the angle that the sun has come up has put it immediately behind the plume. So for the last hour or so it's been like a giant softbox but with shafts of light appearing and disappearing underneath it and around it an absolute landscape photographer's wet dream, I can assure you. Now one thing that I've really struggled with here is controlling my shutter speed. Because I would normally be shooting everything around f5.6, the problem with that is um, I'm freezing the water movement. But I don't want to put a filter on because I know that's going to give me too long a shutter speed because the water is still moving pretty fast. 
So the only way I found practically to be able to control it and be moving my camera about, picking off compositions as the light changes, is by dialing it right down to a really small aperture. I wouldn't normally do this, of course, because I'm into the realms of diffraction in the lens, but because of the nature of my compositions, there's lots of mist around, I'm not really trying to pull close detail out of the shot. I think I'll get away with it. Anyway, after about 90 minutes here of just the most jaw-dropping photography, um, I don't know what the rest of the day is going to hold, but frankly, I'm already done. I'm, I'm emotionally exhausted. This has been absolutely incredible. And to have been here to share it with a couple of mates as well, doesn't get better than this. Well, it's about 8.30 in the morning now. We're a couple of hours on from sunrise. And I'll be honest, I've calmed down a little bit. When we first got here, I was quite overawed by the spectacle of the landscape and also the light that we got. I was desperate to take advantage of it, but I also wanted to share it with you. So I was trying to uh, juggle two things at once. So if the vlog from the earlier part of today was a bit shabby, I'm sorry about that. What I've done now is I've moved down the canyon a little way and don't tell anybody, but I've hopped over the fence and I wanted to make sure I didn't have any foreground. So I'm keeping an eye out for police because I've been told I'll get arrested if they catch me. I'm more concerned about falling off than being arrested. Anyway, what I wanted to do was to experiment with different compositions from bits of the falls, uh, also the whole horseshoe but more specifically to use different shutter speeds for different parts of the composition. So what I've been doing is I've been shooting the upper part of the falls at about a 50th to a 60th of a second to keep a bit of detail in it. And the lower part of the falls, where the foam runs down the river, I've been using six and 10 stop filters to get shutter speeds of about a minute to 90 seconds, something like that. And I intend to blend those together. Anyway, Tim and Rachel have turned up. A few others, no doubt, will be along shortly, and I'm being a bit antisocial, so okay, I've traveled a long way and I wanted to do some photography, but I also want to say hi to a few people. So I'm gonna go and do that, uh, and if there is any more photography a bit later on, I'll be sure and share it with you. The sun is right up now. We're going to meet the other guys in an hour or so around 1 p.m. We'd headed up onto this bridge that forms the border between the US and Canada called the Rainbow Bridge. We thought we would be able to stand in the middle of this bridge and shoot down the gorge. Unfortunately, you can only go onto it if you've got international documents like a passport or something. Otherwise, they won't let you back in. Um, and Simon and Andy, the guys who very kindly brought me here, didn't have any documents with them. So we've headed up to this uh, kind of formal Italianate garden here. It's really quite pleasant and we're just doing a bit of street photography. Now it's a bit like the vlog I did a little while ago, the street photography in London, where I found a place where there were plenty of people to shoot, but not big crowds, so I was able to isolate individual subjects. So Simon is filling his boots with photography, we actually saw a crowd of Amish people coming over the bridge. So we positioned ourselves and intercepted a few shots of them as they came through the uh, customs.
I'm going to leave it there for this one. There'll be a few more pictures to show you at the end, but I think the photography is pretty much all done for today. And what a day it's been. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you ever so much for watching. Oh, and if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers. <laughs>